Hey folks, it's Ard Wolf. Welcome. We're going to have a look today at a brand new, or pretty new as in, in the last couple of weeks, RPG product from Columbia Games, and that is the Kingdom of Azadmir. Um, this is a Dwarven Kingdom. The Kingdom, the new version of the Kingdom module has just been released, so I figured we would give it a look. So let's first of all place the Kingdom of Azadmir in context on the island of Harn. Uh, this is, of course, the official Columbia Games map of the island, and it's been a little while since we've circled back to this. At some point, I should do a introduction to Harn, what's Harn what Harn is all about um, video. But it is a, a fantasy setting, and uh, a very earthy, medieval fantasy setting. Um, Non-human uh, sapient races are very rare here, but two exist on the island of Harn. There are the Sindarin, which the, are the elves, and the, the Kuzdul, which are the dwarves. So if we zoom in to the Sorkin Mountains here, um, we will find the kingdom of Azadmir. Um, there's not a ton of different settlements. There is a significant human population in Azadmir as well, um, but it is known as a dwarven kingdom. Um, and you can see that it borders more or less, the only other state that it really borders on is Kaldor, and the module does talk about this, uh, which I've already had a look through, so I knew what I was getting into. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the module. Um, it is, as you can see, 32 pages, and it's full color. You can either get these from Columbia Games directly, or you can uh, pick them up in PDF from drive through RPG. I think at this point, because they're loose leaf anyway, I think most people are probably just buying them in PDF and printing them themselves in whatever format they'd like. Um, so first page here, we get the breakdown, the population breakdown. Um, it's a monarchy. It is uh, ruled by King Hasmadul III, who is a dwarf. Um, it has a population of 11,000, of which 4,800 are Kuzdul and 6,200 are human. Um, and the humans of Azadmir have kind of developed in a, a, a synergistic way with the dwarves. So they're they're a bit unlike other Jaren peoples than one might find elsewhere on the island of Harn. Um, <clears throat> so it talks a little bit about the capital city of Azadmir, called Azadmir. Um, the kingdom is named after the city. It is, in in some sense, a city-state, but it is not just that city. There's there's some outlying settlements and stuff like that. Um, high altitude, this is a recurring theme here. Poor soil, unsuitable for growing wheat. Um, kingdom supplements its crops with grain from Kaldor. Um, as is typical for Harn products... Um, it, there's things loaded with adventure hooks and there's a huge adventure hook that was like it might as well have been a neon sign that we'll encounter later on here uh, that ties into the fact that um, Azidmir has to import food um, only those outsiders who have been named Umarai, who the Kuzdul friend are allowed to travel freely within the kingdom this honor is given to those individuals who have provided a great service to the kingdom. Um, writers on this, uh, I might as well talk about this, are uh, the late N. Robin Crosby, Edwin King, Tom Doglish, Carrie Mould, Mark Renouf, Joe Adams, and Brent Bailey. I do have the original as in mirror, but I didn't think to break it out for this video, so sorry about that. Um, there's been a couple of previous versions of that. Um, uh, art uh, in here is by Richard Luschek, and the Kingdom map is by Tom Doglish, which uh, should show up here at some point. Um, so we get a nice, thorough depiction of Azadmir's history here. Um, the origin of the Kuzdul. Um, this is an interesting point because it uh, Harn was kind of set up by Crosby to be this sort of internet interdimensional nexus. So you could kind of put whatever you want into it via that mechanism. And it is very possible, um, and I, I think intentionally so, to read this origin of the Kuzdol, uh in a, such a way as to infer that they came from actual Middle-earth. Um, there is, after all, a, a plane in the Harnic cosmology called Midgard. Very easy to interpret that as Middle-earth. And the Sindarin came from there as well. Um, so the first uh, Kathiran home of the Kuzdol was Murdane. Um, it is said to have been a city of silver and gray towers, um, and there lived the seven tribes or nations of the Kuzdol, and then they split out 
and founded their own cities, including the city of Karaz, which was also on the island of Harn, which we'll get to, and Azadmir, and their reasons for doing that are unknown. Now, in the published materials, there are some there is some discussion of other dwarven cities. There are two in the Vinia region, for example, um, and there are two in mainland Lithia that we know about. Um, the ones in Lithia are Harkaheim and Kandaskal. Um, at some point, the Jaren arrive, the humans. Um, Jaren outnumber the Sindarin and Kuzdal. This talk, we'll talk about the Codominium, where uh, this sort of union of humans and dwarves and elves ran the island in peace. Um, <clears throat> to whatever extent that is not mythical. Um, that broke apart in the Battle of Sorrows, where King Dilda uh, of the Sindarin, who's the High King of Harn at the time, is killed. Um, his heir, uh, Aranoth, uh, basically abdicates that High Kingship of Harn, and everybody is pissed. Um, and the that is the historical reason for the friction uh, today on Harn between the dwarves and elves. And it's, it's again, easy to read that as more than mere friction. It's, it's, it's actual uh, dislike, and, and they will. I think both uh, peoples are probably aware that their time is nearing an end and so are re reluctant to engage in wanton bloodletting, um, where they don't just attack each other on sight, but they, they don't like each other, particularly. I think the elves consider the dwarves big soreheads. Um, so the second dwarven city uh, is uh, on Harn, that was on Harn, it was the city of Karaz. And at some point, uh, an evil sorcerer named Lothrim the Foul Spawner appeared on Harn and carved out an empire in part with assistance from an imported race of servants called the Gargun, and these are the Harnic Orcs. Um, eventually, they went bananas. Uh, Lothrim became convinced that the dwarves of Karaz had this tome that he was looking for. So while the, the, the army was out elsewhere, um, he attacked the city, uh, overwhelmed it because it was thinly defended at the time and killed everybody. Um, the dwarves were displeased. So even though they were vastly outnumbered, they hunted uh, Lothrim's army down, killed the army, and captured Lothrim and threw him in a sealed cave with some starving Gargan. Um, and that is covered by the foul spawn wars here. Um, and then after that, uh, and this is all in the in the sort of in the timeline in the last 720 years. You may recall that the the Harnic calendar it, it, it says that it's the year 720, and the metafiction of the materials has always been very firm about not going beyond that and saying that it is up to you and your campaign to figure out what happens in the future. So there's no ne there's no meta plot here that is being handed. Uh, this is all just history. So as you can imagine. Um, the, the, the history here provides you with a lot of, um, of story hooks. Um, did the dwarves of Karaz actually have the penultimate tome and Lothram didn't find it? Maybe it's somewhere else to be found. Where is the exact cave that Lothram, he may have had something on him at the time that was extremely valuable or powerful. Um, where is the cave in which he was sealed? Nobody knows that. <coughs> you, could, <coughs> you could find that or stumble across that. Um, <clears throat> the uh, current situation uh, is where we get to in the ongoing struggle here. Um, mule trains carrying grain from Kaldor up the Silver Way, which is one of the main roads of Harn, um, and we've talked about that in a previous video. Um, the grain subsidy is a significant drain on the royal treasury and a growing cause of tension within the kingdom. Uh, Gargan are still a threat uh, because there is still a significant Gargan presence in the area that's claimed by the kingdom. Um, there is an abandoned mine that was overwhelmed by um, Gargan at some point in the past. This is the mine at Fana. Um, this clan, Dirac, has been trying to reclaim that mine for generations and has continued to fail. Uh, you'll notice they believe the Gargan have supernatural aid. Um, let's find... Uh, here's, here is the, you know, the, the current status of what's going on. Uh, Gargan are the biggest threat. Um, 
The king wrestles with the, tra the balancing the tradition of isolation and self-reliance with the benefits that can come with openness and cooperation with outsiders. Kingdom the king has a couple of sons who feel differently about this. Um, relationship between Hesmadul and his Jaren subjects, those the humans, uh, is strong. Not all Kuzdul share the king's goodwill, so there's that uh, friction as well. Um, this is a rather random illustration, I think just because it includes a dwarf. Uh, this is a dwarf shaking hands with Noron, who is a demigod that lives on the island. Whenever folks say uh, how low fantasy Harn is, I like to point out the these little facts like, well, there's this demigod living out in a in a in a log house on the island, and a god living in a in a well. So um, so there are those things as well. Uh, King Hesmadul considers restoration of Axon as the best hope for reducing the kingdom's need to import food. Now here's here's the 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 big this is the, the sort of lost uh, fief. So the the there was a there are a couple of different barons, a human barons for that matter. Um, of Azidmir, and the one is the the fella in charge of one of the towns. Uh, this barony of Axon has uh, was the one that was overwhelmed by the Gargan. The king has declared he will grant the fief to whoever can recapture those mines, and then clear and hold the surface lands for seven productive years. These were the farmlands of Azidmir, um, so it is important that this happens. Um, and boy, this is a huge like whole campaign hook right here, right? This is the classic uh, uh, campaign building or kingdom building campaign hook. Is the king says if you can hold this land, you know, clear it of, of monsters and hold this land, then uh, you can become the baron of this land. Um, boom, just like that. Um, so that's you know, there's a whole campaign buried in this this one little paragraph here. Um, this talks about um, Azidmir's international relations. Um, all of their trade goes through Kaldor. Um, they have friendly ties with Meldarine, and the heirs of Meldarine uh, traditionally visit Azidmir, as the current king did when he was the prince. Uh, the demigod Noron, who was actually the guy in the previous page, um, shares the Kuzan hatred of the Gargan and will sometimes fight along them to crush Falspawn attempts to establish a new colony. And it, he is an advisory member of Meldorin's Council of Eleven, which is sort of the uh, high council of Meldorin that um, uh, doesn't really run the kingdom, but has a very strong voice in the decisions that get made in that kingdom. Um, bitter and hostile toward the Sindarin. Uh, we also have the Uthriam Ruliri, the secretive brotherhood of human Siamist woodsmen. Now, Siam is, you may recall, the sort of woodland nature deity um, that is nominally worshipped by the, both the dwarves and the elves and some humans, relatively uncommon among humans. Um, has close ties to the Jaren inhabitants of Azidmir and Ivail. In the absence of formal diplomatic relations, the rangers have occasionally been called on to act as intermediaries or to carry messages. So once again, you got a whole huge uh, hook right here in this uh, paragraph. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't know that I remember this secretive brotherhood of Siamist woodsmen, to be honest. Um, I don't know if that's new or if it's something that has just been mentioned more prominently in, in this publication. Uh, it's I mean, Harn is the kind of thing that as you continue to go through the materials, um, you will find new stuff. You will make new discoveries. Uh, the Kuzdul of Ezidmir have little contact with the Evidians of Orbal, who seem to have a hunch that the dwarves are uh, supporting the Jaren um, miscreants who are trying to throw off the yoke of uh, Orbali's rule. So um, there's some friction there. Uh, some Kuzdul see humans in general as an existential threat. So... Here we have a discussion of the royal family with some, some really nice art. Um, the king has uh, six children, um, Crown Prince Khazar, and he talks about him. He has an oldest daughter. He has a second son. Uh, he has a young daughter, I, uh, I think. Yeah, so a young daughter of, of only 45. Um, and then Tokarak, one of King Hesmadul's brothers, left the kingdom many years ago and hasn't been heard from since. He may be traveling under an alias. The king will pay handsomely for information of his whereabouts. Uh, yet again, once an, uh, once again, another uh, another adventure hook. D did your uh, party encounter a mysterious dwarven traveler recently? Um, perhaps.
perhaps he was the brother of the king of Azimir. So here's the, here's the kingdom map, and uh, this is kind of like one grid square on the big map. Uh, if we look at, that's, that's this grid square, okay? Um, and we can see a great deal of detailed information here. There, sh there is a key for this, but I don't know if the key is in the module. I know that the key is available for downloading for free. But we have all these small settlements or heaths or manors or whatever they are. Uh, we have these numbered points of interest. Uh, for example, here's the Guth Bridge, which was destroyed, I think, by the Kuzdol to prevent uh, enemies of some kind from crossing it. Um, here is uh, Fauna, which is that... Uh, Gargan overrun mine that we have discussed. There's another one over here, uh, and in fact, uh, is that one? That one is actually on the big map as a point of interest. As did this site, site Pixen. Is that over here? It is another uh, Gargan occupied site. It looks like. And here are the points of interest. Uh, we have these watchtowers, which are sort of, sort of small fortifications that were built over the centuries by uh, by Azidmir uh, as part of their defenses. Um, we have these hunting lodges, uh, or Relt. Uh, other Axon, after the other Axon manors were abandoned, or Relt remained. Um, so, but it was abandoned in 692, which is about 28 years before. And we're going to find that that is over here. Uh, here's a trail over the Azada Pass. Uh, another trail. Uh, here is a marsh known as Harbog. Here's another trail. The Stone Face. Uh, a path breaks off Reskin Trail to follow the Sweki and Tamarin streams to a nearly 1,000 foot precipice, in, upon which is carved the face of a bearded Kuzdal nearly 100 feet in height. Known simply as the Stone Face, the massive visage gazes out across the Sea of Ive and can easily be seen for miles across the forested eastern slopes of the Sorkin Mountains. So, uh, yeah, uh, dozens of ancient Kuzan tombs are dark carved into the cliff. So that's, uh, yet again, more, more campaign hooks and adventure hooks. Um, a few leagues south of the Reskin Trail, Lake Karana sits in a secluded vale between Mount Genzu and Mount Karan. Uh, there's a natural limestone column more than 80 feet tall known as Ajmeg's Hammer. Um, it was the site of a Jmorvi Chantry, a Chantry of Wizards, uh, that was sealed and abandoned after the fall of Pixen. So that's interesting. Here is the achievements of select great clans of Azidmir, the, the coats of arms of the various uh, high families, or some of, anyway, the various high families of the kingdom. Um, and most of the kingdom modules contain this type of thing. Uh, and sometimes they're, comp like, they're, they're very comprehensive as far as like every noble family in the kingdom gets a coat of arms, and sometimes no. Uh, in this case, I think just because these are like the dwarven clans and there's too many of them to put on one piece of paper. Um, and then we get a big section on Kuzan culture. Um, there is a, an article, a dedicated article on the Kuzdal. And this makes me wonder if maybe Columbia at some point is not going to revisit that. I don't know if there's an updated version of that or not. Um, none of the content here is, I mean, it's good detail, but none of the content is going to surprise you if you're familiar with fantasy dwarves, okay? Um, that's intentional, right? Uh, it, it was desired to make the sort of the, the, the pieces of the Harn setting fit easily into people's campaigns, and that's why they're designed this way. Um, some stuff on gender roles. The diet. Um, they eat some what sounds like some pretty sketchy food, if you ask me. Uh, Fast-growing slime molds, for example. Uh, game hunting, they still hunt uh, outside, of course. There's a, another thing that we're not getting in um, the Kingdom module here, by the way, is the city. Um, that would be found in the Azidmir city module, uh, which we're not looking at today. Um, and in fact, it's a good question as to whether that um, appeared in... Yeah, so that that uh, Azadmir did not appear in the Cities of Harn Kickstarter. 
Uh, makes me want to uh, ask Columbia to revisit that and give us a new version of the Azimir City module. Um, dwarves are big on craftsmanship, obviously, so we've got a section on that. Uh, I think they're the, uh, the only manufacturer of actual gold coins on the issue on the island of Harn, uh, the Kuzan Gold Crown. Uh, they are the main commercial source of gold, which is completely unsurprising. Um, although rare, these coins are universally accepted. Royal Mint uses techniques unknown to humans to produce the crowns. Um, arcane lore. Um, so uh, it is occasionally uh, possible to encounter dwarves who are um, practitioners of arcane uh, knowledge. And they will typically uh, follow the Jmorvi path in the uh, sort of Harn magical cosmology, uh, which is um, something that I don't think I can do justice to in this video. Maybe I can do another video just on the magic of Harn, which is very interestingly developed, by the way, and which is not at all generic. Um, which a lot of the this dwarven stuff is gonna is gonna I think read as generic, but that again that's intentional. And remember that all this all dates from 1983 ultimately. Um, clothing, the arts, appearance. Many Jaren and Azadmir are of older bloodlines and tend to have somewhat dark complexions, dark eyes, and black or dark brown hair. That's interesting. Uh, so these are the Jaren of Azadmir specifically. Uh, here is some notes on how the government works. Nobility, the Kuzan concept of nobility is different from what is seen in Harn's human feudal kingdoms. Nobility is not tied to knighthood or hereditary land ownership, but is an honorary status given to recognize service to the kingdom. So much more uh, of a modern concept of noble titles than the historical medieval notion of noble titles. Um, here is the Kuzan Law whole section on this. Um, here's religion, uh, and this is where it's going to talk about Siem, the, the, the Kuzan deity, um, one of the ten uh, like main deities of the Harnic um, cosmology, or at least on Harn itself. Um, the Azure Bowl, this talks about uh, the, 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 the big lake that Azimir is on is considered... Um, analogous to this this mystical azure bowl that uh, cm has um economics as admir is very wealthy uh, obviously they're dwarves after all um the silver way which is the only big road into as is considered by many to be the most dangerous of harn's four major trade routes and that's probably because it has uh uh the typical problems of um, bandits and such, uh, but it's also over more rugged terrain than um, the other uh, main roads, um, and there's Gargan on either side of it that could raid the place at any time. So, um, uh, the Kuzan do not teach the Kuzdul do not teach their tongue to outsiders. So there's some discussion of that. Natural resources you can pretty much fill in the blanks on this one. Um, another interesting feature is that. Um, the dwarven cities of Azadmir and Kiraz were built in the places they were in part because there are godstones at those locations. The godstones are artifacts of the Earth Masters, a mysterious pre-human civilization, or and pre-dwarven and elven for that matter, um, who uh, had a presence on Harn and on the planet of um uh, that Harn is on um, about 20,000 years ago. And the Godstones are, uh, they might be other things too, but among those things that they can do is serve as portals between dimensions or planes. Um, so there's this Godstone like in the basement of the city of Azadmir, um, and this discusses that. Um, again, this is something that's kind of in the deep uh, back fiction of Harn, and which is probably worth its own video, and I don't think I can do justice to it here. Um, military resources. This actually talks about the specifics of um, the military of Azadmir. Um, and it actually has a standing army, which is very unusual on Aharn as well. It is really, really small, but it, it is a standing army. Um, uh, we have the fortress at Zorhan. There is a module on Zorhan. It's a cool, uh, cool location. It's a cool, cool, pretty cool fortification. But um, I don't think we'll discuss that in detail here. Um, 
and of course some more about the Gargan and the Falspawn menace, which have attacked uh, the kingdom repeatedly. Uh, there's a here's a huge campaign hook right here, uh, back door into Zerhun, for example. Oh, so the the crown prince the crown prince will has promised a large reward if you can find a back door. Um, of course, I guess you could just tunnel one, but that might take generations too. And then here is the sort of so this isn't like the article on Azadmir City. This is just the, the like the thief information on Azadmir City. Um, and you see that here's the big thief, and then here's all the little sub thieves. Here's Baron Gindale Kofar, who is the Baron of Habe, which is uh, who is the king's uh, like chief human um, follower. Uh, and then here's his thief information. And there's a lot of information. I mean, we're obviously not going to go through this table, uh, but there's a lot of information buried here. There's there's uh, information on acreage and land quality and how many heads are in there. I think that's families rather than individual people. Uh, but you could gain a lot of information here if, you're, if your party is wandering around in this area just from here. It's like, oh, well, the farmland here is pretty crappy. You know, what does that mean when you actually walk into this little hamlet um and here's a section i think we're getting pretty close to the end on axon the lost barony um this is a uh, i i would say the most prominent and obvious uh complete campaign hook for the entire module um and i read this with great because again this is something i haven't looked at as admir for a long time um i have run uh, campaigns uh, in Harn, not that long ago, but um, we weren't we weren't up here, right? So it's been a while since I've gone through this, and and this is this is a substantial expansion of the old Azadmir Kingdom module. Let me put it that way. Um, there's a lot of additional <coughs> information in here that I don't remember from the old one. Um, so um, that is the whole module. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this quick look at it. Uh, again, you can pick these up through Columbia Games directly, or you can. Um, or you can um, get them through DriveThruRPG in PDF format. So if you're interested in this, uh, it, Harn is a fantasy setting that I highly recommend, whether you're going to use it for D&D or, or whatever. Uh, it's very suitable by design for a variety of different uh, fantasy role-playing game systems. Um, and I will continue to do videos on it as long as I want, because it's one of my favorite settings. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, if you'd like to see more Harn videos, please mention that in the comments below. Very helpful for me to know that. Um, and if you'd like to support our World Slayer, please share the video around and or check out the Patreon link in the video description. Thanks again for watching and until next time, happy gaming.